everybody, and a very warm welcome to Hewish Football Ground in the heart of Somerset for West Country Soccer, which today features no less than two FA Cup matches in the third round. Our featured match here this afternoon is, of course, Yeovil Town, the non-leaguers up against First Division Queen's Park Rangers. But for Yeovil Town, since the war, they've reached the third round of the competition no less than seven previous occasions. So they're no strangers to an often giant killing act. Perhaps the biggest one was on January the 29th, 1949. On that occasion, it was First Division Sunderland here. And that afternoon, Hamilton and Alex Stock, who's here in the crowd almost 40 years after, to watch today's game, made it 2-1 to Yeovil Town. Well, there's another featured match, I promise you. That's up in Wiltshire. It's at the county ground where second division Swindon are this afternoon playing first division Norwich. So let's find out the news from there as we join now Roger Malone. And a very warm welcome to Swindon. And what do you know, the, the rain stopped. That's the good news. The pitch, though, it's still, uh, it's still very heavy. And, of course, that Swindon won't mind that. They've got this reputation for super fitness. And fitness could be a big factor on this heavy pitch. Uh, Norwich will bring a lot of first division class. They also bring a left winger, Dale Gordon, who's 21 today, comes of age today. Is that an omen for them? The 1,000 or so travelling Norwich supporters who've come all that way, a 400 round mile trip. They'll hope it is an omen, but one thing is sure, I think we're going to have a really good cup time. So highlights of that game coming just a little later in the programme. And I can also tell you we'll be bringing you the results of both Bath Cities and Bristol Rovers FA Cup ties this afternoon. But now it's time for our featured match. It's Yeovil Town versus Queen's Park Rangers. I see the teams are about to come out, so let's join our match commentator, Martin Tyler. It's the same Yeovil side which beat Cambridge in the last round, two of whom have tasted first division football. Goalkeeper Bob Isles with Chelsea and the former Bristol Rovers goalscorer Paul Randall, whose Division 1 days were spent with Stoke City. All these lads part-timers now with a wide variety of jobs including a Ministry of Defence civil servant, Jeff Sherwood, and two policemen, Steve Rutter and Andy Wallace. The departure of Terry Fennick left Queen's Park Rangers needing a new sweeper, Gavin Maguire, a new captain, Alan MacDonald, and a new penalty taker, Mark Falco. Rangers good enough to lead the first division earlier this season, but at that time, a streak of vulnerability revealed in a Littlewoods Cup defeat by third division Berry. Paul Randall has been left out of Yeovil's recent Vauxhall Opal League games, but manager Brian Hall recognising the value of Randall's big-time experience. And the FA Cup has brought the best out of John McGinley, who scored nine times in this competition, but oddly has only one league goal to his name. Nicky Jones, recently signed by Queen's Park Rangers from Charlton Athletic, a West Country boy. He has played here before when he was with non-league Minehead. The longest-serving Football League referee is on duty today, Lester Schachter from Torquay, his 17th season. Yeovil Town, giants among giant killers, get the game underway in driving rain on a heavy pitch and sensibly they give their goalkeeper Bob Isles an early feel of the ball. Nerves will be jangling out there and not just the nerves of the part-timers. Queen's Park Rangers with Mark Dennis putting the first clearance onto the roof of the stand on the far side. They've been preparing solidly for a week down in the West Country, down in Cornwall, on a similarly sloping pitch at St Austell. And Pearson very nearly emerging behind Ian Dawes then, in a threatening position. The whistle had gone. And all the professional training that men like Nicky Jones have had over the years is certainly under question in circumstances like this. Both teams operate with a sweeper system. Wayne Faraday wearing number 10 for Rangers. The sweeper here for Yeovil is Jeff Sherwood. And they'll look to get it long whenever they can. Sherwood with the header. And with the volley. Aiming for Randall. Jumping with Alan McDonald. You can bet your life the tackling will be keen Maybe over competitive in the quest to establish some early advantage here. And Leicester Chapter has blown in Yeovil's favour. The tall centre back ricketts 
was making a run across the face of the area and they changed the angle to use Ferns. McGinley is right in there. It'll drop for Phil Ferns again. The oval kept in. Plenty of Football League experience. Now a van driver. Certainly talking to the Queen's Park Rangers players who got the feeling that they want to get this over and done with. With a minimum of fuss. Theory and reality might be quite different. Cordice. And it's got away from Dennis for Randall. A jittery moment then from Mark Dennis. But now it's a free kick as Faraday is felled by Randall, who was nearly the beneficiary of the error by Dennis. That dropped off McDonald, and Bannister couldn't quite collect it and gather it in. Pearson, Paul Randall makes the run, Maguire the sweeper hesitated, and Randall looks for support, he's got it inside from Phil Ferns. Possibilities for Yeovil, and a meaningful strike the way you will play the use of the sweeper in their side allows the fullbacks to push on as Ferns did Faraday trying to run it to some sort of safety but runs into trouble in the shape of Donnellan who wins the tackle looking for McGinley Paul Parker is very quick indeed even when bogged down on a pitch such as this and he needed to be there to get ahead of McGinley. The back header from Falco. Met by Cordice and then by Wallace. Here's Dennis. Gary Bannister pulling away into the penalty area for the early cross. Here's Maguire. Good battling from McGinley. It needed Parker to slide in. And it might be a costly challenge. Because Parker is hurt. McGinley was chasing. And Parker got there first, but also got the force of McGinley's boot. Doors with a throw. Foul by Bannister. And Yeovil certainly getting plenty of early free kicks. some strength in the left boot of Phil Ferns. Rutter. McGinley going in with the goalkeeper. Johns kept his eye on the ball. Back from Rutter. Johns again uses the fist. Cordice. Donnellan. Andy Wallace was free round the back. One or two appeals from Yeovil. But when the whistle goes, as they now turn on Leicester Schachter complaining that there should have been a penalty. Certainly it was a test for Johns. And when the ball came back in again, it was then that Yeovil had their chorus to try and influence the referee. But there was some sort of shove on McGinley. Doors with a clearance. Helped on well by Allen. Sherwood's pulled out of position, the sweeper. And Ferns, in trying to deal with a completely mishit shot or cross from Faraday, a complete slice, and Ferns was in danger of guiding that back into his own goal. It's brought a corner to Rangers. Brock takes it, and Isles, with some difficulty, catches it. Now working as a life assurance inspector. In the third round for the tenth time in the club's history, that's a non-league record. 39 times they've got to the first round proper. 
Rangers have to defend again. Parker with 20 minutes gone. And Faraday certainly could be a problem here of the sprinter's acceleration. Bannister. Dennis hugging the touchline at the top of the slope. Outside Faraday still. That's a good volley clearance by Pearson. McGinley trying to make something of it. Since Terry Fennick left Queen's Park Rangers, they've fitted Gavin Maguire in very nicely at the back. Beaten Southampton and had a draw at Arsenal. But that last game at Highbury and the game here in very different surroundings. Here is Maguire in that free roll at the back. Only 20 years old. Well, if you take the structure of the non-league pyramid now with the Football League, that was a little bit of a non-league attitude there by Pearson. Strangely sticking up a hand. But there are some six divisions between these two clubs. You would hardly know that if you were a casual visitor on the balance of the game so far. But I just wonder whether that rush of blood by Jerry Pearson might lead to a problem for his Yeovil teammates here. Falco took it well on the turn. An uncomplicated player, Mark Falco, who's aware of his limitations and wasn't prepared to take an extra touch that time. He swung into the shot and got it on target. Bannister, it's too long. Pearson, who has been playing up front, who has been given a role on the left-hand side of midfield. A very industrious type of player, Jerry Pearson. And that's an unfair leap by Ricketts on Falco. McDonald is the back man. Ricketts was up well. Here's Brock. Used Dennis as a decoy. And fortunately for Isles, he got a clear view of it. Ian Dawes. And Faraday has pulled away. That was a brainy piece of play from him. And he gets past Donnellan. Brock. Rangers keep the pressure on with Dennis. Here's Falco. Dawes. And Falco was looking to take the throw quickly, and in fact, he was leaving it to Parker. Ricketts thought he was going to get the chance to take the throw. In fact, it's Maguire now, after Parker's attempts at the long throw have fallen a little bit short. Trying to get sufficient purchase. Donald got the flick. The second header was from Rutter, and it's a Rangers corner. Brock really can provide first division service. Isles, not sure. Yeovil survived. And that's driven straight back by Parker to a goalkeeper who'd recovered his position, and possibly his composure. Cordice. Away goes McGinley, and Parker's missed it. McGinley! It was a splendid effort. But to the relief of Paul Parker, he enabled the citizens of Somerset to warm their hands in appreciation, but not really celebrate with the roar of a goal. Looking to curl it. The Oval's leading scorer. It didn't curl enough. Bannister. 
Wallace in the way. It meant that Dennis, who was trying to dart forward, had to turn and cover back. Brock. That's one of the most measured passes we've seen in the first half. It's found Wayne Faraday. Falco and Bannister in the middle. And here's Dawes. It's deflected against the post and tucked in by Falco. To end the first half, note of realism, almost developing into a romantic occasion. Yeovil couldn't get it away. Dawes had the first shot. The deflection took it onto the post. Falco, who'd earlier been appealing for the goal, recovered to get the goal himself. It was well constructed by Rangers well before that shot from Dawes. But it's Falco who has made the breakthrough. 1-0 to Rangers at half-time. Rangers trying to alter some dreary cup results in other competitions for them this season not only losing to Berry in the Littlewoods Cup but to struggling second division side Reading in the Seamod Cup and that was at home but what a good time to score in circumstances like they find themselves in here right on the stroke of half time and Mark Falco who scores goals wherever he plays is very steadily in the groove now in Jim Smith's side. That's his fifth since signing last month. Three waiting in the middle. And Faraday, who helped set up the goal by switching from left to right late in the first half, starting on the right-hand side in the second and being allowed to go a long way. Burns with the header. The captain's armband worn in succession to Terry Fennick by Alan McDonald. Wallace jump with a hand raise. Caught ice. Well, Johns may have seen that late. It had to be taken instantly by Cordyce. Wallace was jumping for the original cross. And then I wonder whether he might have been offside had that gone in. And the, the oval roar starts up again. Wallace, McGinley, Randall, and hit Dennis. Donnellan, if one like that flies in, your name in FA Cup history is immortal. Rutter, Pearson going in. Randall, Randall again. For the first time, really, the most proven goal scorer in the Oval side got into a position where he was facing the goal and he took the volley on his left foot, but it hit bodies. And Rangers still lead. And Isles again. Not protected when Faraday runs at them with the ball. McGinley. Rangers could break here with Dawes. Brock is his partner in crime. Bannister calling for an early cross, and Brock provides it. The flag is up. The flag is up. Bannister got what he wanted, the early cross from Brock. But he'd got too far forward himself. Here's Allen. The play stretch now, and Yeovil labouring to get back. Falco for Martin Allen, and Isles has come. 
and is appealing for a penalty. But the finger is pointing in the opposite direction. It certainly looked as though Isles, who had committed himself, got the ball, and he did. McGinley, that's a marvellous ball for Paul Randall! And you really, given Randall's pedigree, would have expected him to have buried that. It was a tremendous touch by McGinley to Randall, who side-footed it wide of the goalkeeper, but wide of the goal. Great chance, maybe Yeovil's chance, and it's gone. And some rueful reflections, I'm sure, on the chance Paul Randall missed. Falco, he's allowed to turn and he's found the place he was looking for. Mark Falco's second goal, and Queen's Park Rangers now can start looking forward to their place in the fourth round. One or two other options available to Falco, but his thoughts were with shooting. Given away by Ricketts to Coney. There could be a third in the offing for Rangers here. Noble has to sprint back, and then Allen dispossesses him. And Kerslake with a great chance for 3-0. And Isles saves splendidly off his line. After Wayne Noble had lost out to Martin Allen. And Kerslake slugged it at the goalkeeper. Brock. Now Kerslake. Coney and Falco repositioning in the middle. Coney. And Brock does score to really seal the day for Queen's Park Rangers. They came here with so much speculation that they may fall down this Yeovil slope. It hasn't worked out that way. Leicester Chapter has checked with his watch. Mark Falco, who missed out on Skull Cup honours with Rangers, makes a happy start to his FA Cup campaign with Queen's Park Rangers. Two goals for Falco, one for Kevin Brock. Professionalism, in the end, has overcome the pluck of the part-timers. And it made sure that Queen's Park Rangers didn't slide down the Yeovil slope like others before them into FA Cup oblivion. But I just wonder what would have happened if Paul Randall, with that splendid chance at 1-0, had been able to take it. A final score then at Kewish. Yeovil Town 0, Queen's Park Rangers 3.